in this world because you have to do this and you conform and all the rest of it. The difference is that when we make the choice of the path we want to journey on in this reality in what we call a life, we're doing it from this perspective of perception. When we're trying to understand why we made it, we're doing it from this level of perception. So this sees it on one level and this is going, I'd agreed to this, you must be having a laugh. Never. Well, this is seeing it in a different light. And it's the same collectively. Why us? Why are we here at this time, now, as this cusp of change is going on? Same thing. You've already made the choice, now you have to understand it. You didn't come here to make the choice, you already made it. Now you have to try uh, to understand why we made it. Instead of complaining at the situation we're in, and again, this made the choice, this is trying to understand it. Once you break out of this into this, you then start to understand it. Because you see what we're experiencing from a totally different perspective. For instance, this sees, in the journey down the symbolic river, this sees the next turn on the river, no further. This sees the whole river from source to sea. So this is seeing an experience in the moment that this is having in a completely different way to how this is seeing it. For instance, you're going down the river on a canoe, it springs a leak. You, you paddle across to the bank and you sit there and you're angry and you're frustrated. Why me? Why am I so unlucky? And then some guy comes across and says, hey mate, you were so bloody lucky. There's a bloody waterfall behind, around that next turn. And we can even override that through intuition. When we intuitively access this, we intuitively know, no, I'm going to stop for the day here. I'm not going to go any further today. And this might be saying, oh, we can go further. I'm not going any further. And so, so many things we can be protected from by following our intuition. Why are we here collectively? We're here to break the spell. We're here to break the spell on the human collective mind. What a great thing. What a great thing to play a part in. To break this, to break this spell and to stop this human experience becoming this. And in the next few years, they, like I say, they're going to throw everything in desperation, like the cornered rat trying to hold on to a control system that's falling. Um, this is where we're going to need to have this perspective of I am consciousness, I'm having an experience. Because that will make it so much easier as we, we go through this uh, transformation and challenge. Because if we're in this world and of it, those people are going to find the next few years very, very difficult because they will not have a, a perspective of what's going on, except everything's going crazy, and my God, what's going to happen next? This is a great line from a song. Freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Isn't it amazing how when you no longer have anything to lose, the butterfly emerges? Because it's fear of loss that keeps us in servitude so much. And when you've got nothing left to lose, suddenly all this left is freedom. And that is going to be a very powerful experience that a lot of people are going to have in this next period of challenge as this cusp moves on. Just when the caterpillar thought life was over, it became a butterfly. It's amazing that when, you, when you're in... It's, so many people have told the story that it was in their lowest, lowest moment of despair that, boom, something emerged and transformed them. Nothing left to lose. Freedom. Okay, I'm waking up, so what do I do? Well, I would suggest that we all stop making bloody excuses. You know, we can all come to the conclusion that there's this control system and it's doing this, and what about the children, and what about the grandchildren, what's going on? And then the list of excuses why we actually can't do something today. Well, there's a game on, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. Nothing is more important than focusing on what is happening because everything comes from that. 
What can we do? We can refuse under any circumstances, no matter what the freaking laws and the pressure and the imposition, we can refuse not to have the right to express our freedom of expression. Refuse under any circumstances to shut up. If, we, if vast numbers of people did that, this is the key to it all, what are they going to do? They don't have the numbers. We can stop focusing worship on celebrities and television and fake politicians and even uh, sport. Not that I don't enjoy sport, but as long as it's there, peripheral vision, and not here, but worship, externalizing. And this is the biggest thing we can do. Human race, get off your knees. What are we doing down there? What are you doing? You're all that is, as it been and ever can be. Where are your bloody knees for? Well, I'm only little me. No! If we get off our knees, the control system's over. Martin Luther King said, a man can't ride your back unless it's bent. And then there's the people in dark suits and uniforms. Hey, you've got children and grandchildren and families as well. What are you doing serving a control system that wishes to impose a fascist date on your families? What are you going to say to your kids when the, the control system's in and it's controlling every facet of their bloody lives? Daddy, mummy, granddad, grandma, what were you doing when the control system came in? I was helping to do it, dear. All the best with that conversation. What are we doing? Playing a part in, oh, it's me job. We'll get a bloody another one then. We gotta do this to our children because it's my job. What can we do? We can cease to serve the control system in uniform with a gun in our hands. We can do that. Soldiers are not there serving their country, serving their people. They're there serving the cabal that's seeking to enslave their people and their families. As Einstein said, the pioneers of a warless world are the youth that refuse military service. And more are equal to that, the adults beyond military service who support those that refuse to serve this control system in uniform. Oh no, you've got to serve your country. You serve your bloody country. I ain't doing it. Just like those wonderful Israeli young people. <laughs> know thyself. When you know thyself, when you know you are consciousness, think consciousness is going to get a machine gun and start shooting at aspects of itself. Mind does that. Mind fights. Consciousness doesn't even contemplate it. And that doesn't include just people in uniform. It means fighting for freedom. What's all that about? Let's fight for freedom. Let's, uh, let's have a riot in Athens and let's kill three people from the banking system. Hey, the world's a better place now. What you fight, you become. We don't want to fight this system. We need to cease to cooperate with it. This is a meeting of mind. One mind on a horse, one mind with something in its hand trying to do damage. Oh, they're two sides. They're one mind without consciousness. Freedom fighters, contradiction in terms. Cognitive dissonance. 
As Martin Luther King said, the limitation of riots, moral questions aside, is that they cannot win and their participants know it. Hence, rioting is not revolutionary but reactionary because it invites defeat. It involves an emotional catharsis but it must be followed by a sense of futility. They want people to riot. It justifies more control. Nor do we need to meet this challenge with hate. That's playing away in the stadium we're trying to rid the world of. We don't need to hate these people. We just need to stop cooperating with them. Well, you know, if it's all the same with you, mate, I ain't doing it, okay? No hard feelings, bugger off. And then we've got this, you know, the protest, the mass protest. I do understand that. It might have a part to play. But so many times these protests, they're what I call steam whistles. You know, people go out in big protests with the banners and they, they kind of feel good about themselves and they go down the pub and say, oh, at least we made our feelings felt. And then what happens, bugger all? How many people marched in London against the invasion of Iraq and what happened? Iraq was invaded. Protesting has such limitation. They don't care if we protest and walk through the streets and shout slogans and wave banners. They care if we come together, irrespective of colour, creed, gender, sexuality, any of it. Put our differences aside and unite behind what affects us all and all our families. This control system, this Orwellian agenda, is not trying to enslave black people or Jewish people or middle class Americans or Hispanics or Australians or Indians. It's trying to enslave all of us. And what it wants to do is divide the target population against itself through these fake, ridiculous fault lines of race, religion, income bracket. So that we divide and rule the target population and they can pick us off one by one. They are terrified of us putting down those fake fault lines and coming together and uniting behind what we should all believe in, freedom for all, irrespective of who we are. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Someone else's injustice is our injustice, because if we allow injustice there, eventually that injustice will come here anyway. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Silence is consent. Can you hear us now? Silence is consent. Because while we're silent on these impositions, the impositions just keep going on and on and on. By our silence we are acquiescing, even agreeing to them being imposed. The end of silence, the end of acquiescence. If we want to be free, then don't run and hide. Because you can put your head in the sand and ignorance is bliss, but only for a while. You can put your head in the sand because there's a tornado coming. But the tornado is still coming, your bum's in the air. If you lift it out the sand, take responsibility and face it, you can take avoiding action. Ignorance is bliss with a head in the sand and then, bang, your ass is spinning up in the clouds. Strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from an indomitable will, Mahatma Gandhi. Isn't it amazing how true that is? How you can see soldiers in uniform involved in truly extraordinary levels of physical courage and what we call heroism. And yet those same people are terrified of saying boo to another guy in uniform who's got more stripes on his arm than he has. Isn't it amazing? With physical strength can come so easily and moral strength not. That's to do with the moon matrix and the way that we're, our perception is, is uh, manipulated. Turkish proverb, a lion sleeps in the heart of every brave man, every brave woman, and it's not really bravery. 
When you let go of fear, you don't need bravery. You don't need courage. Courage is overcoming fear. When you let go of fear, because I'm all that is, has been, and ever will be, what's the worst that can happen to me? I leave this physical body of limitation, and I become all that is, has been, and ever will be uh, in full awareness that that is what I am. My God, I'm terrified that that might happen. I don't know how I'm going to cope with the terror of thinking that might happen. Know thyself. Again, recurring theme. Know thyself. We are consciousness. What is there to fear? Death? There is no death. 